Hi, it's Carlos from RC Advisor. Uh, today I want to talk about speed controls. This is going to be a two-part uh, video or article. First part I'm going to talk about programming them in general. In the second half I'm going to get into specific recommendations for some of the different settings. But, you know, speed control is really a, a computer and, and they've, they've gotten really sophisticated and, and there's actually quite a bit of computing power in there. And they have a little bit of um, reprogrammable uh, memory, you know, it's like a flash type of memory where it, they save their settings. And as, as a convenience to the users, they've, uh, the manufacturers have made available a lot of the options and internal settings um, to you so that you can change them. And, you know, there's different reasons why you may want to change the settings, but if all you're flying is a park flyer with a three cell battery pack and you know this pretty much a run of the mill type of model you don't need to be reprogramming the speed control okay so so right then and there you're done you know i i mean it's so, you can do it if you want to but um you don't you don't have to especially if you're fly, flying with a three cell battery pack now if you fly with two cell battery packs like like this one or you know four or more then, then I, I definitely recommend for you to change some of those settings. And of course, if you have a different type of model, a glider or something else, you may want to reprogram it. But there's also some other reasons why you may want to change the settings. And, and I'll talk, I'll get into more uh, specifics in the next video. But um, there's two ways of, of changing the settings in, in this big control. The old fashioned way is using, you actually program it through movements of the throttle stick on the transmitter. And in the old days, that made more sense because the speed controls were simpler. There was just not as many settings to change. And the main setting that you had to change was to tell you the number of cells that you had in the battery pack. But they've gotten so complicated that, I, I mean, I, I think it's been years since I've, I've tried to do it that way because you know, if you're listening, you know, it's, was it eight beeps or nine beeps? And it just kind of was driving me nuts. And, you know, just to give you, a, give you an idea of how complicated and, and, and sophisticated these speed controls have gotten, here's the, these are the instructions for a Jetty, uh, you know, speed control, you know, talking about all of the settings. And this is tiny little type. I mean, they just goes on and on and on, you know, both sides. I mean, there's just a lot to it. So. I don't program my speed controls using the, the transmitter stick uh, anymore. You know, I, I, I either don't program them at all if I, if I think the default settings are going to be good and chances are that they are, or I use a programming card. And I strongly recommend for you to get a programming card for your speed control if you're thinking of changing the settings. And, and you know, the downside with the programming card, and, you know, here's, here's one right here is that they really only work with one brand. You know, this one is, is for Ternigy, but actually if you, if you go to their website, um, there's probably different programming cards for, for different Ternigy speed controls. So even, even for one brand, you know, they have different lines of speed controls and they'll need a different programming card. So it, it's a bit of a problem. Um, you know, and they all have a little bit of a different interface and the way that, you know, the way you program them is a little different. Uh, but this, this is a very strong incentive to stick with one brand of, of speed control because then you can get the programming card. I mean, I paid like 10 bucks for this one, which is very reasonable. And, and, and you get to know what the different settings are and what they do. Uh, and you don't have to kind of start over if you get a different brand of speed control. I also have a, pro this is a programming box for a Jetty. Uh, speed control and, and I forget how much I paid for this one but it, it was either 30 or 40 or 50 bucks so it was a lot more expensive than the other one but of course you get a nicer you know LC type of display and you know the, like I showed you uh, a moment ago there's a lot of settings that these fancier speed controls have so uh, it, it's, it's nice to have a, a nice uh, screen that you get some English text that tells you what the setting that you're changing so you know that's that's this, this is wor well worth it, but again, you know, do you want to spend, you know, 40 bucks for a, a programming box like this or, or more? You know, some of them are a little bit expensive. Uh, so you really only want to only wanna buy something like this if you have a, several speed controls of the same brand that can take advantage of it, because otherwise 
you know, buying one of these for every new speed controller that you buy, I think that, that, that wouldn't work either. So, um, so don't, you know, only use the, only program it using the transmitter stick if it, as a last resort. Uh, I strongly recommend getting a programming box, uh, but if your model is very straightforward, then you don't, you don't need it. And um, I, uh, until next time, where I'm going to get into the details of programming this.